everyone today we're going to make our table favor number two and this one is are called a Santa table favor and I've actually done it twice already halfway through the second one my my um, video card was full so it wouldn't go any further so I'm going to make another one but I'm going to make it in green so it looks like an elf's coat so it stands up on the table like this and it will hold two of these mini chocolate bars that you get from Audi. You could actually cover these with Christmas paper because then it would look even more Christmassy. But if not, just showing them like this. And they come in lots of flavours. They come in the marzipan, which I buy because I like. Um, dark chocolate, milk chocolate and white chocolate that I know of. I'm sure that depending on what part of the world you're in, they may become in other flavours as well. I'm not sure. Um, so anyway, that's what we're going to make, but we're going to do it in green. I'm, now I'm using this set here, a ranger wreath, just for the Merry Christmas in there. That's all. So let's pop that on the side and let me show you exactly what you need. You're going to need a piece of card for the pocket that measures 6 inches by 5 inches. And then a piece for the back that measures just a smidgen under. Let me put the pin in my glue because it's warm out here. Just a smidgen under four inches. So a three and fifteen sixteenths by five and seven eighths. Then for the base, you need a piece that is four and a half by two inches. For my collar, now my collar I have actually put on my tutorial a piece of card that measures two inches by one and a half inches but I wanted to use up my scraps so I just cut my collar out of an oval like this so it was this oval this double oval punch and I popped it in as far as I could to the edge and cut it off so that I've still got those two pieces to use for the front of my coat I've got two pieces and these are both one inches wide and one is five and seven eighths long and the other one is two and a half inches long then my belt, it is nine and a uh, half inches long, minimum. Um, it could be a bit longer than that, I'm not sure. I think this piece is. This piece is probably uh, about ten and a half inches long, so we can always trim a bit off because I haven't trimmed it off. And that's one inch long. For my buckle, I need a piece of silver that is one and a quarter square. And then for the middle of the buckle, you need a piece that is one inch square. Then you need a just a bit of scrap here to make your buttons out of. Now I've put either half inch or three quarter inch um, circle punch to do that. I've got the half inch punch here today with me. And then I've just made this small label out of the Taylor Tag labels just for this. So any kind of label so to make the label to go on the front that just says Merry Christmas. So And a bit of ribbon. Okay, so let's pop this in. Whoops. And we'll score our two pieces of card that need to be scored, which is the pocket and the base. So we're going to score the base on the short side at one inch. Sorry, I've got this upside down. One inch. Then on my piece, my green piece here that is six by five, on the long side, on the six inch side, we're going to score this at two and a half inches and at three inches. I don't know why, but my thing is looking wonky. Okay, then on my short side, I don't know why this has got a funny mark on that. So there's nothing, I can see it. I can see it in the screen, but I can't see it in real life. Never mind. Um, anyway, this needs to be scored at a half an inch. And at four and a half inches. So I'm not going to worry about that funny mark, even though I spat all over it now, um, because we can always cover this if we wanted to. But because it's just for a table favour, I don't think it's going to even show, to tell you the truth. I don't like it. What, what that is, it looks like it's got a line in the... Um, Where the, I don't know, it just looks like maybe there's a mark in the paper itself. I've never seen that before. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to 
fold and burnish all these score lines. So that one, and that looks like a score line, I nearly went for it. That one, this one, and this one. Okay, when you've done this, you find that when that stands up, like so, one side is actually shorter than the other, and that is correct. The shorter side is the front. So what we're going to do next is we're just going to cut up these score lines here and just wedge them in a little bit. And we'll do the same on this side. I need to cut my finger then. Would you believe that? And I've cut that. Where did I wedge? Who wedges back to front? Only idiots like me on today. <laughs> Never mind. They're not going to be seen. Okay, so once we've done that, we're going to pop some glue onto these little tabs on the outside of them. On the outside. The, and we're going to bring the back up and over so that it forms a nice squared edge. So if I lay it down, you can square it up nicely and bring this one over as well and bring that round and square it up nicely. Once that's squared up really nicely and it's dry, we can then pop some glue down these tabs on the side. And we'll do both of them at the same time. And then we can bring, oops, bring that one down and turn this over so that the score line goes over the top and around the side. And again on this side, so that it's nice and square along those sides like that. Once you're happy with the way they are nice and square, just give them a bit of a burnish down with your bone folder so that they are nice and flat in there. Okay, so we're going to get our scissors now and we're going to cut from this edge here up to this edge here on this on these corners, these sides. So we're going to do it, I'll pop it on the side, so from that edge up to that edge, just on the angle like that. And you'll know that it's the correct angle because of the way we've actually got it in there. So there's our bit, it's angled on both sides just like that. So while that's just sitting there for a minute, we're going to bring in our base piece and we're going to burnish, fold and burnish this one in half. Now you could do this single layer, but for, to me, for me, I found that when I did a single layer at first, it just felt so flimsy that I just wanted to make it thicker. So I added the other layer to it. So that's why we're doing it double. And we can wish that together nice and tightly like so and then with my corner rounder wherever my corner rounder may be I'm going to just round the corners on all four of these corners there we go so they're all nice and rounded like so and that can sit and dry it as well but they'll bring in the back of our card, our box, and that's going to sit inside just nicely. As you can see, it's just really nice and firm. So we're going to just lift that just a tiny bit, and with a pencil, just put a mark along the back on that piece so that you know not to put your glue any lower than that point, any higher than that point. So we're going to pop some glue onto the back, and I, because I lifted that, I will not need to to worry about um, re removing the, score, the pencil mark. So I pop that in up against the front edge first and then letting it drop down so that it's flush on the bottom and we can pop that in there like so. And as you can see on the bottom, on the back rather, you can't see the pencil mark because I lifted it that tiny bit beforehand. Okay, so now we're going to put on our collars and our fronts, uh, coat fronts. So I'm going to put my 
collar on first, my coat front on first, which is going to go straight down the middle here. So I pop my coat front on here. And carefully place that into inside and try and get it as much in the middle as you can. Once you're happy with where it is, just make sure it's down nice and firm. We're going to do exactly the same with our smaller piece. And pop that onto the front here. Now, this is one of the pieces where you really need to be over the top of it so that you can see that you've got, got it lined up with the one above it. By pressing it down like that, you can see that you've got it done. My piece is just a little bit longer than the, the what it should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim it. And this can happen to everybody, anybody, because it depends on how you cut from one piece of card to the next. And I don't like the way that's sitting there so it can come off a tiny bit more. But don't worry because it will be covered up with the base. Okay, so I'm just going to pop my pieces on here like so. Now I don't care if they go over the edge because of the fact that this is not going into a box or an envelope or anything like that. So I'm just going to pop these in here, pop them on the sides, lining them up along the top. And if they hang a tiny bit over the edge, I'm not actually going to worry about it. And I'm doing that on both sides. And once again, making sure that that's lined up across the top there, like so. Okay, so then our collar is on. And um, we're not going to worry because we're not. We're going to pop a hole through there and pop this on here, so you won't see anything in the middle there. Okay, for the next part, we're going to do our belt. So we're going to put our belt around box like so. It's going to be flush with the top of the front and round the sides, round the back, round the sides, and round the front. And now that is definitely too long, so I will cut about that much off of my piece. So because I've actually done two sides, I did that one and that one, and I was happy with where they're going to sit, I'm going to pop those through like that, making sure this is nicely lined up. And I'm going to pop some glue just on those two sections. And then I can lay this back on here, starting roughly in the middle, going around the top, top, making sure it's flush at the top, around the side to the back. Happy with that? Then I can come around to the back and making sure that it's lined up again with the other side. And you can see where it's going to be from this line on the side of the box. We can then Fold that over and fold it over again. And if you're happy with that, you can turn them under and just give them a bit of a, a nice crisper edge. That is entirely up to you. If you're happy with it just being, you know, rounded around the edges, that's fine too. So once I know that that's correct, I can go, yay, look at that. I can pop some more glue onto the back of this piece. Whoops. And onto the side piece, bringing it around again, making sure that it lines up nicely, and bringing it around to the front, pushing it up into place, and then I will then glue this last piece into position. So, bringing that up and making sure that it overlaps nicely we can pop that down and now i can just run my bone folder along that back edge there like that along the side along the bottom and the other side 
Oh wow, that's look, starting to look really good. So now we're just going to put our buckle on. So I'm going to actually glue my black piece of, of my silver piece of my buckle onto the card first. Now, when I've added my glue here, I've left a bit of a larger gap at the top because we wanted to overhang just that tiny little bit at the top. And once we're happy with that in the middle there, we then can put our other piece on, like so, which goes inside the buckle. Oh, come on, sit in there. There we go. We have our buckle on there. Now I'm just going to cut my three buttons out. I don't think I've got any more. I don't think I've got any black in the bin here. Have I got a small piece of? I've got a small piece of black in the bin, and I'm going to use that rather than cutting into a piece that I know I can use for other things. So I'm going to cut, punch out three buttons and I'll glue those onto the front of the card. Now you could put these up onto dimensions if you wanted, but because this is just a Christmas thing and you're going to put something behind there, I didn't see the point in putting any extra height on there and obstructing where the chocolates are going to go. Okay. And then the other button there. Okay, before I go any further, I'm actually going to just punch my hole in the top here. So I want my one and an eighth side, which is that side, and I'm just going to pop me a hole roughly in the middle just there like so. That way I can do that piece after I've put this piece on the bottom. So now I'm going to pop my band, my base onto my box by placing glue along the bottom of the box or pocket, lining it up so that it is actually sitting nice and firmly on top of that with the same gap on all four sides. Once I'm happy with where it is, we'll give it a bit of a prod down. And so that while we're doing our little bit of stamping, we can make sure that it's going to sit there and not fall off. We'll pop our chocolates in the front and pop it on one side. I'll pop the lid on my glue, because it's out of the way then. And we'll bring in our little tag here and I'm going to stamp my Merry Christmas onto this in garden green. Wow. And that's just a piece of um, very vanilla card. So now I just need a bit of ribbon and I'll probably need a, approximately six inches, which is, I don't know, 15 centimeters, I suppose. And chop that off. And pop that through my top of my box. See if I can get them through without having to poke them. Oops, only one. Need to get two of them through. Start again, try again. There we go. And then the same through the top of my label. I'm not going to put any um, embellishments on this, uh, you know, because of this, these are for children. And the children that are going to have these are actually quite young. So popping that through there. Just going to pull these up a bit tighter. Up, 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 up. That one doesn't want to move. <laughs> Come on, move, you little things. It's probably because it's trying to do it through two lots. So let's pull that through a bit more. Up through the top there. And it's gradually getting there. There we go, we've got it now. So then we will just trim them off 
so that I don't have any excess. And that is our table favour. Our Christmas. Oh, look, doesn't it look so good as a elf set as well as a, a Santa suit? And I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. I really do love it. And as I say, you could actually cover these chocolates if you wanted to. But there you go. We have our elf suit and our Santa suit. And these will sit on the table beautifully like so in front of the person. You could actually even, instead of putting Merry Christmas on here, you could put people's names. So if you wanted to use them as place settings at your Christmas table, they would really make a lovely addition to any Christmas table. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you would like the written tutorial for this, please head over to Dyes Den for stamping, crafting and tutorials. It is called Santa Table Favour Day 2. And if you would like this, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I love to hear from you all. And I will see you again next time. Bye for now.